Good day. In this video, I'm going to uh, show you some simple code to compile C Sharp applications because I noticed that I don't have any code DOM videos. Okay, so I have a console application here that is built to compile another, um, you know, console app that I've written. It takes the source of another application and compiles it. So here is the method signature. I called it compile C sharp source, so it's uh, specific to C sharp. It returns compiler results, and you can pass in array of source code. So this is the code itself. You can combine it yourself, or you can uh, specify it as separate strings in an array. And you have the output, and this is the destination for the file, or the file name itself, that is. And then you have references. Uh, you can leave this blank if you have those basic references that can be found automatically but sometimes you're gonna have to specify some references here alright so we have compiler parameters compiler parameters just specify like uh, the references and the output directory and some other optional things that you can set like uh, generate executable uh, generate executable is false by default so you're gonna have to set that to true Otherwise, it's not going to output to an, to a file. And then I'm using uh, the C# -sharp code provider. You can use the original or base code DOM provider, and uh, still compile C# -sharp with that. But I don't like specifying that C# -sharp string, and I find this to be a bit more like this is here for a reason. You might as well use it. C# -sharp code provider for compiling C# -sharp code. And it's a disposable type, so either call dispose on it manually or use um, a using directive, not a directive, uh, a using block or statement. And return provider compile assembly from source. Okay, so compile assembly from source is going to yield compiler results. So that's why I'm returning on this method. And this is also going to compile the assembly in output or generate an executable. So we've got our parameters, um, our compiler parameters we defined above, and the sources. The sources are source code itself. Um, when you read the documentation on this property here, it's not clear what sources is, uh, because at first I thought it was paths that you would specify, but it's actual code itself. It says an array of source code strings to compile. It's a bit obscure, but this is source code. All right, so I'm going to show you how I'm using it. Actually, I'm going to show you the project that I'm compiling. So I have the test console here is doing something with this. I've got two uh, required classes. These are the only classes here that I need to um, compile. And uh, that's about it. Let's, we can run this application so you can see what it is. At the moment it's just listing 345. Alright. Um, Let's take a look at how I'm using this. So I've referenced those two paths using uh, just hard-coded strings, and I'm reading all of the text for these paths, all the source code using file read all text. And then I've created a references string array. It's pretty cool how you can uh, do this with the var and the new thing, this implicit array creation. But I don't recommend doing that. You should either do new string array or specify the type somewhere, really. All right, so I wonder if my resharper is doing that now. Yeah, I like the spaces around the, the string literals here as well. Okay, so we've got our references, system.dll, system.coreDLL. You can determine the references by going into the project that you're compiling, assuming you're doing this. Just uh, right click on references and hit remove unused references. This is a resharper thing, but everybody should have resharper by now because it's super useful. And then when you're done, click on the, um, or right click on the references, go to properties, and then uh, copy the name of the DLL. So there are certain locations where I do believe the codon will pick up on where the DLLs are automatically 
but if it's in an odd location you're probably gonna have to copy this entire path so you have system.core that's obviously going to be system.core DLL and these are in places that are common so you're not going to need to specify them in this case so I'll show you that in a while alright so we've got our references and we have uh, results because remember compile C sharp source returns results and I'm just uh, creating a ray from these sources up top here and I'm saving it as app exe which is going to turn up in the application startup path and we've got our references alright and afterwards you can iterate through the errors in the result you might as well print out the errors because uh, if there's compile errors it's not going to show it's not going to raise an exception in code it's just going to add to this uh, compile error correction collection I mean so you want to iterate the errors print them out do whatever and you're golden alright so let's run it we've got no errors and it's going to show up in my application startup so let's go to the application startup we have app exe there it is 345 seems to be working correctly we can delete that run this again and it'll show up again because it's being generated all right and last but not least we can remove the references because the references are in common places or something so we can remove the references we no longer need them we don't need them to begin with with this specific project and it will compile just fine you can actually try we're going to try to combine these source files because I used to I did this in a project before I combined the source files and it um, did okay with it like I combined I iterated through an entire project with multiple classes and combined them to into one file so that it could be built to a client really easily yet I could still debug it in a solution um, it's just some automated thing that I wrote and something to do with the using directives we're going to check that out we're going to take the using directives put them inside the namespace it should help we probably won't be a problem anymore all right and I'm just going to save all and we're going to try it again there we go no errors so you don't really need you can combine them if you want to, you just have to be considerate. I don't really, I don't remember actually having problems with the using directives before being outside the namespace, but it seems it's, that's what's happening now. It's very interesting. Alrighty then, that's about it for this video. I hope you learned something. See you later.